play to earn is a fantastic new innovation. Avatars, all of these things can become NFTs and become portable outside of the game and, and truly owned by the players. NFTs and any play to earn mechanics aren't enough. So we need, for example, better tool chains as well, because currently everything Web3 related is super complex. So let me set, set the stage a bit before we dive in. So play to earn is a new concept that has really exploded onto the crypto space this year, we could say. And the core of it is that instead of um, players paying to play the game and, and, you know, different versions of that, it's now flipped around and, and players actually earn by playing. So that's where the name comes from. And what we're going to discuss in this panel is how this is really just the first manifestation and like combining these crypto primitives of tokens and NFTs and DAOs, just a whole new field opens up for the gaming industry. A further kind of context to note is that really the leader in this space and probably the best example is Axie Infinity. And they have some impressive stats at this point with like 2.5 billion annualized protocol revenues. For context, that's only beaten by Ethereum itself at this point. Um, and they have over a million daily active, uh, active users. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's a whole ecosystem that catalyzed around it. Um, YGG, I believe, is also got started with Axie as well. So there's really, um, I'm sure Beryl will have some context here. Um, but yeah, I think what we want to discuss in this panel is not just play to earn, but really more generally the future of uh, gaming as influenced by, by crypto and blockchain technology. So let's start off with talking a bit about how gaming in the metaverse is more than play to earn and just maybe moving away from that concept a bit, just kind of looking at it from first principles. Um, Robbie, maybe we can start with you. And by the way, um, these questions are just meant as prompts. You know, anybody else who has like some input, please feel free to just make a discussion out of it. And I'll continue with the next prompt once once we run out of steam. Sure. Um, so, Robbie, no, how think... do you think we can um, co players can co-create value? And maybe how do you think generally about this space? Sure. Um, I think I think first of all. Play to earn is a fantastic new innovation, um, you know, that we have in gaming now as a result of the fact that we have blockchain underpinning a lot of games uh, that have come out recently. Um, but I think we can think about many different things that blockchain enables. You know, blockchain fundamentally enables content ownership, and so with that ownership comes the ability to trade and monetize the content. Um, and sometimes, you know, I prefer to think of it not so much as play to earn, but um, play to not lose everything um, because I think one of the good ways to think about blockchain games is that once you have ownership of the content a lot of people and a lot of media attention etc has been focused on the idea that people can make money and that what they buy in games for example might appreciate in value um, but I think the more fundamental change as an industry from traditional gaming to blockchain gaming is more about the idea that um, players just won't necessarily lose everything. In a traditional game, all the money you spend, 100% of it goes to the developer. You never get anything back. It's a one-way system. Blockchain games, you know, turn that on its head because that sword that you buy in the game, it may not be worth more than you paid for it, but it's worth something. Because a new player coming to the game has the option to go to a marketplace and buy your second hammery sword. And so another secondhand marketplace, maybe you want to sell that at a discount because you've decided, I'm tired of this game, I'm going to go to another game. And so there's always a market for secondhand digital goods. And this means that when you don't lose all your money in games, you'll be more likely to spend more money to begin with. So I think that this is an important point that's often lost kind of in the, in the smoke and, and excitement of, of all the opportunities to make money. Yeah, that's a very helpful reframing. So it's very much about all of these in-game items and, and valuable um, yeah, avatars. All of these things can become NFTs and become portable outside of the game and, and truly owned by the players. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, um, maybe Marco, you could uh, elaborate a bit on how some of these innovations could transition into the Web2 gaming space, if at all. Like, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, what I observe is uh, like play to earn as a paradigm is, is quite nice. And of course, it helps a lot, especially if you frame it with a narrative like this. But also there's like a, yeah, a little bit of a downside, so to say, because um, most creators in the Web2 space, like vi traditional video games, uh, currently cannot really participate in Web3-enabled games. And on the other end, uh, even the Web3-enabled games um, yeah, somehow have little incentive at the moment to really innovate in their like business model, for example. So NFTs, from my perspective at the moment, it sounds a bit harsh, but uh, it's more like an add-on feature uh, to existing business models. and so it doesn't really push people to really move into Web3 apart from benefiting from the item ownership upside, which is already a very big one. But, and to answer your question, um, if we really want to uh, enable this, uh, this industry, which is stuck in Web2 on tap them transition into Web3, possibly NFTs and any play to earn mechanics aren't enough. So we need, for example, better tool chains as well, because currently everything web free related is super complex in terms of integration and um yeah that makes a lot of sense um in terms of the business model i'd like to dive in there a bit more so we've mentioned by now this uh, ownership of in-game items and so on like just the fact that um, players can earn by um, participating in the games but i think there's much more and there's complex ways these intertwine I think YGG is maybe one of the um, best uh, early examples of kind of these new how these new types of business models can can be leveraged. So Beryl, I'm wondering whether what's your take on this? You know, what kind of business models are you excited about, and do you see like um, picking up more steam? Yeah. So building up from what uh, Robbie and uh, Robbie and Marco actually explained about ownership, uh, because users and the community actually end up like owning something they end up like earning something uh from um because you know like a there's like a creation of value and uh as that value actually accrues from that ownership um a lot of uh, players are able to um end up like affording and they actually end up having earnings and you know um a bit of income uh, because of that uh what we see in ygg is applications built on top of the community and of these games and some of them would actually be uh in crypto uh DeFi, right so we actually see at uh, the intersection of gaming and uh finance uh because now that users are able to uh to amass uh income now they're looking now they're increasing their savings they're able to make decisions on what to actually purchase um, they're actually one of the first users of being able to use metamask to cash out um, they're also able to actually start like uh, using Uniswap, uh, SushiSwap, and then um, eventually uh, we're actually seeing uh, the ability to uh, kind of like integrate insurance products, other lending products, and so on and so forth, just because they already have uh, the funds uh, that can actually, you know, that they can actually use for these other applications. Um, and to think about it, a lot of the users, for example, at YGG, uh, never had the bank account before. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and news actually came out like uh, three months ago about like MetaMask out of their 10 million uh, users, 20% of that were uh, were from the Philippines, for example. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, quite fascinating how, you know, um, other applications can actually build uh, on top of play to earn games.